What's up, my friends? I'm David Tan, the Master Chemistry Trainer for Alchemy Adventure, and you are watching the Alchemy Adventure Learning Channel, making chemistry learning a magical journey. In the previous video, I've shared with you the basics and fundamentals required to draw a proper skeletal formula. A skeletal formula is a shorthand representation of a molecule's bonding. It is a quick and easy way to represent the structure of a molecule. Sometimes in the MCQ questions, students are asked to list or state the total number of isomers associated with a given chemical formula. Now, many students try to draw all the possible isomers that they can think of, but they do it in the non-systematic way. And therefore, they are not able to draw or state all the possible isomers associated with the given chemical formula. In today's video, I'll share with you this special method. Without further ado, let's proceed to today's theme. Let's start off with a simple chemical formula such as C5 H12. Now, <clears throat> uh, let n equals to 5. What's the meaning of let n equals 5? It means that the longest carbon chain or the parent chain actually has 5 carbon atoms in it. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. For those of you who are still not familiar with the basics and fundamentals of the skeletal formula, you may want to refer to my previous video. Next, we move to n equals 4. So, 1, 2, 3, 4. But we still have one extra carbon that we need to fill up. Never ever fill up the extra carbon at the terminal end. Because if you do, you get back the same molecule as above. So never do that. So we have to add the extra carbon to the center carbon atoms. Of course, some students will try to draw another so-called isomer by adding this CH3 over here. But you will notice that they are not isomers of each other. They actually represent the same molecule. How do you know that? Just number the carbon atoms. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Alright. So notice that carbon 2. Alright, carbon 2. So this is not an isomer. So they are repeated structures, repeated structures of each other. So we just have to draw one of them will do. So let's let me erase the repeated structure in the numbering as well. Next, we move on to n equals to three with three common atoms as a parent chain. One, two, three. So where do we put the extra two common atoms? Never put it at the terminal end because if you do, you notice you get at the above molecule. So don't do that. So, just one, two. With that, we have three, we have drawn out three possible isomers associated with the chemical formula C5H12. Let's look at one more example. The example we'll be using uh, will be C6H14. C6H14, so let me erase this. Alright. So, what we have is, we start with N equals to 6. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Make sure you count the number of common atoms correctly and don't add an extra or uh, less than extra common atoms. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Next, we move on to N equals to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But we have one extra carbon atom that we need to add. So, you can either do it, never put it at the terminal, of course. If you put it at the terminal, you end up with this. So, there are only three possible positions that we can add our extra C3. We can either add it here. One. Let's try another. One, two, three, four, five. We can either add it here. Or, 
one, two, three, four, five. We can add it. We can add it here. But you notice that these two, uh, actually, they are they are the same molecule. They are same structure, right? How do you know that? Just number it. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Right. So therefore, we do not want the repeated structure. Just draw one of them. Will do. So let's erase this. Okay, erase this. Alright, so there are two possible isomers with n equals to 5. Let's move on to n equals to 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. As mentioned, uh, don't add extra comma at terminal n. So, let me erase this. Okay, so you can either do it here. 1. Okay. One, two, three, four. You can either, sorry, you have one here, one here, right? Because you add two extra comma atoms, or one here, one here, or one, two, three, four, one here, one here. But you'll notice that actually these two molecules are the same. So you just have to draw one of them, will do. So let's erase this. Now let's move on to n equals to 3. n equals to 3. 1, 2, 3. Never add the extra carbon to a terminal n. So 6 minus 3, 3 more. So we need to add an extra 3 more carbon atoms. So since we cannot add the extra carbon atoms at the terminal n, we can only do it in the middle, in the central carbon atom. So 1, 2, 3. But then, this is not a valid skeletal formula. That's because this common atom is bonded to five other common atoms, meaning it forms five bonds. So each bond comprises two electrons. So five times two is 10. So carbon being a period two element has already exceeded its octet of electrons. So this is not a valid structure. Therefore, we will erase this. So you notice the advantage offered by skeletal formula. You can actually list out, state, draw out all the possible isomers associated with a given chemical formula quickly. Because as compared to the display formula, there is no need to draw all the there's no need to draw the carbon and hydrogen bonds and the atoms. So it saves you precious time. And we are doing it in a systematic way. Look at the chemical formula. See how many common atoms it has. Let's say it has six of them. You start with n equals to six, then n equals to five, four, three, etc. If let's say n, the number of common atoms it has is 10, then you do it systematically. n equals to 10, n equals to nine, n equals to eight, so on and so forth. So with that, I hope you have learned something from this video and I'll conclude today's video then. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up below. If you have any question regarding this video, leave your comment below and I'll respond to it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get notified as soon as I upload a new video. Once again, thanks for watching and happy learning.